the education, wellness, uh, development and resilience. Um, and I do not have control of this. So can we please just put it back to the other one? Um, Sorry, I'll, I'll give you uh, the control back. I just thought uh, we do have a prettier version of this that everybody will be seeing, but uh, I'll give that back to you. But at the same time, this does work better for a person that's reading off, right? Because it, it has, it, it's, a, it's a stream. So I can there see why, you, why folks would want to see the pretty one. And of course, please download that. Um, and also enter the draw, do the feedback, give your thoughts, get into the, to the draw and download that. Cause it is prettier, but I, this one's a little bit uh, less onus for me to actually go through and share with you. So governance, education, wellness, development and resilience. And of course, resilience is the baseline to all things because no matter how, how much you have going for a community, if you're not resilient to the impacts coming or coming at you, be it health, uh, climate change, economic or otherwise. So resilience is a big one. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is dive into education. So we're gonna to go to section 3.2 if you're following along with me. Let's go down there. And I should have jotted down, here we are. Yes, education here. That was governance up there, guys. Be sure to check out the CCP because it's pretty cool. We have a number of images. And it really what it does is it defrags governance. So here we are, education. So the concept of education is aligned closely with wellness. And residents have described it as a process of building a healthy and harmonious community. Do you hear that comprehensiveness? Themes described under the pillar of education include increased opportunities to share Karkos Tagus First Nation culture and values with non-First Nation residents. That back and forth. Opportunities to learn about the land, youth programming, and activities to support the development of a strong sense of place in the Southern Lakes region. And I think just the process itself, the CCP process itself did just that. It created a stronger sense of place as a collective. So, um, so this was guided. So a lot of this is guided by the surveys as well as the numerous um, steering committee uh, sessions where we would do the deep dives. It's the only thing that's came to the fore were of concern the misuse of land, mostly arising from a lack of understanding how to minimize landscape disturbances while engaged in recreational pursuits. So you can see why health and wellness, including on the land base, and education and community education all come together here, right? And then the general desire to both teach and learn about land-based traditions, and then how to properly conduct subsistence activities. A lot of that is traditional handed down knowledge. And in order for others to be able to comply to protocols, to, to observe them, to follow them, there needs to be that sharing of these protocols um, in a way that uh, people are able to understand and go, oh, okay, yeah, sure, that makes sense to me, of course I'll comply. Because um, we all want to ensure that the long-term sustainability of our wonderful Yukon territory. Uh, related to the need for land-based education is a significant interest in learning about the traditions and cultures, uh, include, you know, First Nation as well as non-First Nation. Uh, residents further see education as a means of, of inspiring youth, reducing isolation on the part of some residents, and reducing substance misuse. Education, education in this case is less about formal teaching of lessons to ensure uh, a common understanding of a concept and more about nurturing a sense of common citizenship between residents and creating a sense of pride in place, especially for youth. Um, and especially during the pandemic, hey, like every, there are so many folks that are feeling isolated and it'd be wonderful to do the reach out. And through the CCP, there's a collective understanding of how that we can proceed to do that. And again, I would say we, but of course it's the proverbial we. I'm the planner, Ryan's the planner. Uh, we hold the pen, but in the end, the CCP is the community. Um, as well, um, education is less about formal teaching, as I said, survey respondents further advocated for educational pursuits as a means of establishing a regional identity, leading to increased pride based on a shared sense of place, and thereby advancing reconciliation while reducing substance misuse and trauma-based effects. It's together that we can do that. Uh, the next one, what, and uh, so I'm wondering, I'm thinking I might do the education, then I'll go into 3.3 for wellness, and then we'll go to the action plans for the tour. 
Christine, can I just bump in for a second? Of course. Uh, we have our first polling question up. Yay! So we are asking, are you interested in supporting, uh, which means participating in or leading land-based education? Um, what we're trying to do is make this interactive. Nice. So folks listening, this is your opportunity to weigh in and tell us what you think. There will be more. Awesome. That is an awesome question. I love that question. Yes, please, folks. And and if you know of others, get them to come on board because this is going to be up. So um, Jesse and Blair, can you remind me how long this will be up following in order for people to feed in? Yeah, this will be approximately two weeks. Nice. So tell, talk to your family and friends, especially the knowledge holders. Get their names in there because it's those folks that we that the communities will be looking to for guidance going yeah, forward. Yeah, Monday, Monday, February eighth will be the last day that will be up. There you go, February eighth, folks. A, a prize. And there's of course a prize. Jesse's super duper about the plot prizes. <laughs> I can't help but get excited. I tell you. All right, so wellness, one of the pillars, one of the five pillars. So wellness influences the physical and mental health of residents and was emphasized by participants both through the survey results and at the CCP open houses. Wellness ranked second in the survey results and was reported as a priority by more than, by almost 23%, like the top priority for them. Um, and uh, themes associated with community wellness include improved community safety, to feel and be safe, a greater feeling of inclusivity, to feel that feeling of belong, that sense of place, Continued uh, physical well-being, getting getting out and moving your bum, an improved sense of community, and addiction and trauma support. That was a big one, because often we're uh, that uh, the addiction and trauma support is people self-medicating because of the various um, ails. Wellness in the context of the CCP is concerned with creating greater sense of community and well-being rather than with the business of combating crime or providing healthcare services. Although both issues were raised during the engagement process and they are priorities, but it's more the community focus, community-based focus on wellness uh, because those are various mandates, right? Federal, territorial, and so forth. When defining wellness, residents described a mutual respect between residents that would reduce discord and conflict and foster openness between communities. So openness would then lead to improved inclusivity and reconciliation between First Nations and non-First Nation residents. So wellness is therefore envisioned as a peaceful process of providing support and assistance to each to reduce the hardship in the region. So whatever the case may be, by working together, you'll alleviate a lot of the issues that come to the fore. All right, so the challenge of improving community wellness is defined in the section is compounded by the dynamic population of the Southern Lakes region. So this may not be a surprise to anyone. It is quite a potpourri. All communities in the regions are growing and aging. And then we go through some of the stats and we find these interesting and you may wanna draw upon them when you're doing grant writing and stuff going after some of this because what you're showing is a clear documented need. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom down to the action planning. So with me, come along, that's to page 30. Where are we now? Where are we but not the actual. It's this um, dialogue box that keeps getting in my way, I must say. Okay, 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 just hold on. So we're zooming through the governance. That was, again, a really good session. Please take out this, take a look at this action plan and give some feedback because it's with you that we this will even be better. So the education action plan, known as the community-based focused education, promotes learning and social development with individuals and groups in their communities and among communities, right? So critical masses using a range of formal and informal methods. Um, so there is a desire to build on formal education programs provided by the Carcross Tagus First Nation and the government of the Yukon, building on them, augmenting them, right? Why recreate the wheel? See what's already out there and build on it. Um, some of the other priorities were the CCP should work to enable and support opportunities for cross, cross cultural experiences. You are gonna hear this time and again, as we should indigenous and non-indigenous to foster a greater understanding of each other. Build on existing education programs to provide land-based training to teach residents and non-residents how to act on the land 
right? We're seeing a lot of impact because of the increase in population and interest in the Southern Lakes region. And often it's because people are ignorant of how to behave. So let's get that information out there together. Facilitate the teaching of local history, traditions, and values of all residents in the region. Create that level of respect. You draw it when you're saying, this is what happens here. People are like, all right, let's make it so. So this action plan was com compiled to connect the actions with the objectives, all right? So we talk and talk about priorities, but how do we get them done? Well, let's put them into an action plan. Let's bust it down into steps. So what we're gonna do, and you're gonna, and these are further detailed lower below into this, the task, each of these tasks become an action plan. But for this purpose, we're just gonna do a flyover. So we have the objective, again, facilitate cultural exchanges. Then we have the action for that one is to facilitate cultural exchanges oriented in both First Nation citizens and Southern Lakes region residents to foster a shared regional identity. So some of the tasks towards that objective and that action is to support the provision of opportunities for the CTFN, Carcross Tigers First Nation citizens to engage youth in cultural activities. That's a big priority. Provide new opportunities for non-First Nation citizens to learn about the Carcross Tigers First Nation culture. That would be fab fabulous. Three, host opportunities for cultural exchange through the art, through art in which the five of the five community, comprehensive community plan communities. And we've already been doing that. And you're gonna see this throughout these sessions, right? There is so much to be shared, so much artistic talent. And number, oh, and that, so those are the three, and that's for facilitate cultural exchanges. The next one, land-based training, right? We talked about that one. So to do that, design and develop a program for all residents in the region with a focus on activities that provide opportunities to teach and learn about land-based traditions and subsistence activities. These are really popular. There's a huge demand for this. Uh, people, that sense of place, I guess, hey? And so the first one is develop and strategically share a local land use ethic to ensure a common understanding, a shared understanding between residents, recreational land users, and subsistence harvesters, because there's a, some uh, overlap and some of it not positive. Number two, develop a social network. So food, such as food and food knowledge sharing network to support subsistence harvests. Like fill in the gaps. Where are the folks that aren't getting enough? Number three, develop programming for learning about the land, its history, and the relationship of the communities to it. And number three, action. Develop protocols to understand cultural appropriation. Folks are doing it and often it's with complete ignorance. We don't know. So why don't we put together protocols so that people can clearly see the role they play in it? Oh, you're waving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Were you waving? Yeah. Who was waving? Yes, we were. I was. Okay. Oh, you were waving. I was focused. I was focused that much on, on the screen and what Christine like... was saying. <laughs> um, we just wanted to add uh, a person in the chat asked if they were, um, how they could get involved in land-based education. Um, oh, we suggest, take her away, Ryan. Yeah, we suggested that they contact us at admin at guntabusiness.com. Um, we suggest the same to anyone who wants to get involved, and we're happy to share your contact information with uh, the land and, Lands and Heritage Branch at CTFN, and take it from there. Awesome! Keep, keep just that stuff coming in, guys! Sorry, Ryan, go ahead. Oh, I said um, putting your name forward just supports, uh, shows support for this kind of action, really strong support that actually can't be shown in any other way. So, Amen, brother. Absolutely. Perfect. And it also tells us that what we heard in terms of priorities and action items, we're capturing it, right? Thank you, folks. Keep that coming in. <laughs> so number three, develop protocols to understand cultural appropriation. Big one for reconciliation. Create training opportunities for local operators and frontline staff to improve their understanding, to enable and support a shared understanding. And the way they share local stories, values, culture, and history, because as we learned, Certain families, their stories are told differently in accordance to the different families. And I find that fascinating. So that there, there really does need to be protocols developed because who can share the stories? And then what part of those stories can we share as outsiders, as the Euro Canadians? So action task towards the, the objective, coordinate. So E31, coordinate to have a local presenter at the Hall in America and White Pass and Yukon route staff trainings for the start of each season with Carcross Tagus First Nation knowledge holders, 
land monitors, and others to be engaged to develop the training materials and activities for the source, right? And these were the operators that came to the tourism retreat um, and they were very much on board. It was like, how can we do better? So let's guide them. Let's get, let's get right, right to it. Bringing on the CTFN knowledge holders and land monitors and others with an interest. And number two, or, oh yeah. Do you, do you just want to tell folks what the tourism retreat was and how that differed from well, our- Why did you do that, Ryan? Uh, so we had two main events, so to speak, with our steering committee. One was a closed event where we discussed the vision and the plan objectives, the things that Christine is, is telling you about. Uh, I, we've always felt strongly here at Kunta that this plan was about the community. Uh, so we were there just as the pen. We were documenting what was said. These objectives that Christine is describing came from the community. Uh, we had a second event, however, uh, at the request of Yukon government to specifically talk about tourism and car cross. And at that event, in addition to our steering committee, uh, we had community services and tourism, the departments of tourism and culture uh, there with their ministers who, uh, again, really what they sat down what we sat down with them to do and, and with the steering committee was sort out really practical solutions that could be immediately actioned. So when Christine talks about a tourism event uh, or something coming out of our tourism and engagement session, that's what she's referencing. Yeah, and it was a big to do. We got a lot of work done, a lot of clarity on things <coughs> as well as where the pinch points were. And so a lot of that got captured. So. The final one was coordinate a local familiarization tour that includes local culture and historical training. So there was a lot of thought that went into this. And think about all the people that I mentioned, they're behind these. I mean, that's quite remarkable. Okay, so as right, you can one see- more thing, Christine. Um, Jesse was kind enough to remind me that report is online if people are interested. It's on the- right. yes. Yeah. It's, so it's on the website if you want more information. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it goes into greater detail, right? These are, the purpose of these is for management. Uh, it's for the community. It's transparency, accountability, and equity. Everybody has access to this. Everybody can see what's gonna happen, how it's gonna happen, and who's gonna lead it. You can always look in, right? That's just good governance. And that should be occurring across the board in all things that we do. Okay, so now I'm gonna head down to, There's a method to my madness. Just hang in there. I hope you guys aren't getting unwell with my, <laughs> my flipping of pages. I do get sometimes a little uneasy. She, she okay. said. <laughs> so 5.3, the wellness action plan. So as we said, community wellness is defined by the ability and willingness of people to act together to encourage and maintain their health and wellness. So it's far more than going to the doctor. It's far more than getting exercise. It's far more than that. Wellness focuses on preventing various types of illnesses, including mental and trauma-based illness, and is based on the understanding that community itself contains many solutions to its own health needs. So surveyed residents indicated that the CCP can contribute to the community wellness by establishing a greater feeling of inclusivity overall. Humans are social animals. We really do need to feel connected to where we are. Otherwise, we don't do well. Fostering reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous re residents. This must happen, and it can never be too soon. Providing the means for the continued physical well-being of residents. Absolutely, it's what we want. It's the common good. Developing an improved sense of community between the four unincorporated communities and the Carcrush Tagus First Nation. So they literally put it right in there that the five communities, there, there is an interest to continue this. And number five, establish clear support mechanisms to address and reconcile addiction and trauma. There is a real desire to nip that, and it's together that that can be done. Are you guys waving? All right, so the following community wellness action plan was compiled, of course, to actualize. Again, we can talk about our priorities, we can talk about our needs, but unless we action plan them, get a champion to hold it, who's mandated or relevant to hold it, the resources in which to do, it, it's, it's tough, things just don't get done, right? And we all know that. We make an action plan to get stuff done. So community wellness, there are, I know some of the, I'm just gonna quickly look. Okay, so there are three. Enable and support community safety to feel and be safe. Oh, you guys wanna talk again? Okay. No, 
<laughs> we were just debating whether or not to tell you that there is a new old new poll question. Okay, go ahead. I'm loving this. <laughs> uh, which is, do you want to learn more about or share CTFN traditions and culture? Oh, I'd love to. Pick me. Okay, that's a great polling question. Thanks so much, you guys. You guys are rocking it. All we're, right. we're trying to help. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> Okay, so the action to support the objective, right here, wellness one, improve community wellness, including an improved sense of security and safety by building a stronger community presence in those areas considered unsafe. Um, so this is more common amongst women than men, but there are certain areas of a community that we just simply don't go to day or night. We just don't feel safe, and it's usually by how it's being designed. So there are ways to improve feeling and being safe through that action. So some of the tasks towards that is conduct a safety design assessment of communities. And all that means is walking through the community with someone that has that lens and says, well, you can put hedges there. You can remove that right there. And number two, encourage a regional neighborhood safety collaboration. Why would the five communities not come together and create a Southern Lakes small r uh, safety collaboration? Draw on each other. Draw on the wee bit of resources that each community has. Draw on the wee bit of capacity and work together and access the Community Safety Officer Program. There's a number of them out there, right? There's, <coughs> sorry guys, there's Citizens on Patrol, there's Block Watch, and then there's the Community Safety Officer Program. And I think that's specific to the Yukon. Okay, so number two, provide increased addiction and trauma support outside of Whitehorse. Everything focused on the capital. In community, to be shared by the communities. The communities are saying, hey, let's come together and see what the needs are and see if we can actually get someone to come, even if it's that rotational. Provide support for residents with specific mention of our youth, elders and seniors, identified with substance use and trauma-based concerns in the Southern Lakes region, right? So the next step would be, hey, where are the, where's the need? And then actions towards that, WT1, promote existing substance misuse treatment services, including counseling and youth services and intensive youth treatment. Now you'll notice that we are very specific about misuse. Abuse to us, it's, it's, it's a negative term. People are self-medicating and it, not in the most positive ways, but it's misuse. Number two, encourage residents to volunteer and support youth and community programs by clearly identifying existing volunteer opportunities and imparting this information to the broader community on an ongoing basis in a manner in which the communities are custom. So communicate with the communities, get the word out using the, the protocols that are already in place. Communities letter, bulletin board, um, newspaper, radio, whatever it happens to be, use those. But a lot of people aren't even aware of the opportunities and they say, you know what? There's never any jobs. Like there's, well, I didn't hear about that. How come I didn't hear about that? So let's create that conduit that everybody knows where to look. And number three, build a regional community coalition to assist with the provision of services that manage concerns and issues related to substance misuse, trauma and at-risk behavior, right? So create that hub together. And then number three, provide adequate care, adequate care to aging and differently abled residents. All right, let's take care of each other. And we're not all able-bodied bipeds. Now, uh, the first, so W3, enable and support senior, almost done guys, one more, just give me a minute. Enable and support seniors and elders and differently abled to age in place by continuing to ensure that they can contribute to their communities and, and work to address all right, housing requirements in partnership with the Yukon government and partners. Housing is definitely a big one. Okay, so three more points, guys, and it's over to you. So to make that happen, foster a regional network to connect aging and differently abled residents in communities. Assist aging and differently abled residents with the care and maintenance of their homes when they are unable due to physical, financial, and health constraints, such as the snow angels. People that volunteer sign up and they get called upon to go uh, shovel snow. <clears throat> there's a number of things you can do. Number three, and the final one is develop adequate senior and elder care facilities across the region, not just in Whitehorse, as we kept as we kept hearing. All right, and as I mentioned, this goes into greater detail so that we can put these into operational plans, mandates, budgets, uh, so forth. Okay, over to you folks. Um, we had a great question from Carolyn. Uh, which was, can we involve the RCMP or community policing to help with this and making it safer by showing 
what the community can do to make the town safer for everyone. Um, we haven't talked directly to the RCMP in this process, but in the work that I have done with them, I think they'd be overjoyed to take that kind of action. And uh, it's just a matter of coordinating it. So we can- I absolutely agree, Ryan. Um, as a community safety planner, so working with Public Safety Canada on community safety plans with RCMP in the communities, the RCMP are typically thrilled to have that ability to reach out to community members. And not only that, but I have to say, as we do that community safety planning stuff, I learn different things that RCMP are able to do to meet communities halfway, including you know, videotaping instead of being a witness, that sort of thing. So it would be wonderful to bring in the RCMP with during this dialogue, absolutely as partners. Yes. Would which is what I was going to say is, is what we can do here is take that comment and these recommendations um, to the Carcross detachment and see if they uh, if there's anything they can speak to. Uh, so I, I would I would recommend that the CCP nonprofit society do that with the executive director and the board of directors. And that way it is as a consortium. But I think that's a lovely idea. Yeah, it's definitely approaching the RCMP and saying, hey, have you seen our plan? Do you see what we're up to? We'd love you to be involved. Come on board. They'd be like, absolutely, we're there. All right, so that was, so what we've done now is we've gone through section 3.2 of the CCP, education. We've gone through section 3.3, wellness. We then went through section 5.2, education action plan. Then we went through section 5.3, wellness action plan. Now what I would like to do ever so briefly, because I do believe I have a couple of minutes time. Yes, Blair? Okay, thank you. Um, is I would like to take you down to implementation. Ryan and I, especially Ryan, really big on the implementation. Rubber hits the road. Because as planners, we we, it, we hear it all the time. Communities are planned out. What they want to see is action. So let's get to the action. All right. So if you want to scroll on down to page sixty-four with me, let's do that right now. And it's the actual page is page seventy. I'm gonna get better at this. <laughs> Here we are. Okay. Wise words. Here's the quote. We want to talk about how we can get to a place so we can implement some of these ideas that have been milling about for years, if not decades. Thank you, James Smith of the Carcass Tagus First Nation, the Senior D Director of Operations. Could not have said it my better myself. And that was the preface of moving forward with implementation. So from the outset, Community input on the CCP process and objectives was clear. The community did not want to participate in the development of yet another plan. Absolutely, hearing your words. I am planning exhausted. The community wanted to see action result from the investment of their time and purposefully, we have worked to keep a clear pathway for implementation of the CCP at the forefront of the planning process since the outset. So this pathway is intended to honor the passion underlying the ideas presented to us. Right? We just hold the pen. The time it took for volunteer members of the steering committee and the residents to communicate to them, and the fact that much of this has been said before. They're tired. Can you please capture our words? Can you make put it into an action plan so we can move forward? Thank you very much. Absolutely. Very reasonable. So with that, and do take a look at that, because of course there's the governance, which is the vehicle that you have to have in place in order for things to happen. Are you guys waving at me again? Okay. No, okay. Okay. Um, so we, for implementation, we are talking about at least in the short term, a not-for-profit society, where however you, however the steering committee, the, which will be the board of directors, uh, decides to call it, but we're just calling it the CCP not-for-profit society, and it will carry through on the top five at the very least in the next. And while they're doing that, they are exploring other methods of governing. Right? They may stay with the nonprofit. We don't know. But the bottom line is get something in place quick, so that's implementation, to get moving. And then figure it out as you go, All right? So then we have the accountability, transparency, and accessibility. And, and it, these illustrations are really great because it shows where you are on the outside and how these things are realized. But let me get to this part, just because I know I only have a couple of minutes. How many minutes, Blair? I think you have about five minutes. Oh, you rock. All right. So in the immediate phase, these have been selected by the steering committee because they're practical, as Ryan said, necessary and have low resource requirements. It's the ready, set, go. Uh, so these actions are intended to awaken the greatness within. 
by attracting new resources to the implementation process and setting the stage for longer term phase and moving through the two pathways envisioned for it, so short term and longer term. And it really was, as James had said, start off with small projects, get the group to gel, start, you know, far more of that trust that, hey, I know what your gift is. Oh, remember, you were really good at that. So let's move forward with that. So the, prime, the five primary priorities recommended for implementation, ready, set, go, governance. Secure funding to establish the required baseline for implementing the CCP, including establishing the nonprofit and communicating out to the communities this intent and the benefits in doing so. The, the where, what, why, when, how, and who. Like, let's be full seminar explanations so that communities can see it. They see it as theirs. They can own it. Education, provide new opportunities for non-First Nation citizens to learn about the Carcross Tagus First Nation culture, including training opportunities for local operators and frontline staff to enable and support a shared understanding about the way they share local stories, values, culture, and history. So let's get it right together. Resilience, gain an understanding as to where each of the communities are in their emergency planning and with the intent of facilitating a regional response to the hazards and risks. Why not come together? And there is funding out there. So as a five community, as a, re a smaller regional approach, do it. Governance, number four, the steering community to proceed with the nonprofit society governance vehicle, emphasizing its role in the founding board of directors. So the folks that have been involved that have given their all right to this point will serve as the board of directors. Why would we do that? Because they have the context, the intent. And, but it doesn't mean they can't be replaced. Of course they can, right? But that learning curve, we have to keep seeding out and creating that succession, that understanding. And you can certainly help with that as well. And number five, development. Create a work for hire map that links existing training and vacant positions within the regional community. In addition, enable community members to be aware of the current business focused training and capacity development opportunities. A lot of folks, as I said, they don't know, but they want to know and build upon the required and desired business entrepreneurial training to enable sustainable self-sufficiency, right? Everybody, don't we all want to be self-determined? Well, let's support one another to get there. And as you see there on this page is the, 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 the final, uh, so that we, we had selected 10 top priorities. The first five will be the primary focus, followed by that is wellness, Establish a five community shared community safety coordinator. I like that idea because they would be your hub. They would be the ones training. They would be the ones. And so all these volunteer extraordinaires can go, okay, fine. That's taken care of because it was important. Governance, identify steering committees to lead the dialogue with the government of Yukon to facilitate the reallocation of the community advisors to serve established regions. regions. And that's just responsiveness, that sense of place. Education. Support the provision of opportunities for Carcross Tagus First Nations to engage youth in cultural activities. It's a big demand, it's a big priority. Development, update community wayfinding mapping to thoughtfully promote tourism attractions, including trail maps with protocols and suggest where restrictions apply. No go zones, that, that's totally common and it's expected. And the final one, wellness. Promote existing substance misuse treatment services. Make sure folks know about them including counseling and youth services and intensive youth treatment. Let's get the word out, let's support one another because we're all in this together. Over to you, Blair. Thank you so much, Christine. Your uh, enthusiasm is infectious. I really appreciate that. Appreciate you uh, going over this. I'm going to end your screen. If, uh, oh, if you're oh, able yeah, to sorry, end your sorry, screen, yeah, yeah. not a problem. So um, I just wanted to introduce the team. I, I never uh, had a chance to introduce yes. the whole team yet. So. Um, I introduce myself, Blair Hogan, the team lead. We have Jesse Steven, the project manager. Uh, she's uh, in, in the uh, room there getting pointed at by Ryan. We have Stephanie Penniket, uh, the assistant project manager supporting Jesse. Uh, we have Ryan Hennessy, the lead planner. He's in the room waving. Uh, Christine Callahu, who we just had uh, enthuse us with the high level, and she's the mentor, the planner. Um, I want to recognize Sophia Fortin, who's been our communications coordinator, facilitator. Um, we've had uh, Colin Asselstein, 
we've had um, a number of facilitators to really bring us along. Averill, uh, Averill Orloff from Outside the Lines uh, doing the most beautiful murals that uh, we've sh showcased through this project. Sam Brad uh, assisting with some of the governance uh, imagery. I want to pay special tribute to Jessica Hall and J Hall Productions and her team for all the work that they did on the video production. We're so proud of that video. The video represents the project by the people, which is I think the most important thing, which is maybe a little bit missing here, just hearing from us so much, which I feel that I wish there was more, you know, there's more um, uh, the people who were talking about uh, representing versus us just talking, but that's why the steering committee is so important and we, we recognize them previously. I do wanna also recognize Mark Rutledge and Megan Jensen who developed the logo, the brand, um, I want to shout out to Mammoth uh, for the website, as well as Upstream for uh, the streaming and the technical support. And I, you know, I just have to say that the CTFN staff, uh, the executive council, the leadership, um, we, you know, the Husha, Husha Duhin Dixon, the deputy Husha Duhin uh, Benoit, we've just been totally blown away with their leadership and their ability to plug in and really set the tone when when it's needed and really help carry this project to the finish line so i really wanted to just make all of those tributes uh while i could and uh i wanted to also ask if jesse stephen would uh introduce our keynote speaker thank you so much Jesse, you're muted. Hi, sorry. I would like to take this moment to introduce Honorable Jeannie McLean. Minister Jeannie McLean is a Yukon innovator and community leader. She was elected to the Yukon Legislative Assembly in the general election on November 7th, 2016, as the MLA for Mountain View. She is the Minister of Tourism and Culture. Minister Responsible for Women's Directorate and Minister Responsible for the Yukon Workers' Compensation Health and Safety Board. She is a member of the Standing Committee on Major Boards and Committees and is a co-chair for the Yukon Advisory Committee on Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women, Girls 2S+. She previously worked as Director of Justice for Kwanlin Dunn First Nation for seven years prior to her role in Cabinet. She is committed to learning and passing on traditional and cultural values. Please give a warm welcome to Honorable Jeannie McLean. Uh, thank you so much, Jesse. And uh, it's been really great and fascinating watching the presentations unfold over the last, um, last uh, session and this one. But uh, Jeannie McLean Ushia, I'm part of the Taltan Nation. I'm Wolf Clan and I come from Klogadena people from Telegraph Creek and I'm a born and raised Yukoner. So uh, very, very committed to what I consider my homeland because this is where I'm born. And I'm always honored to um, share in that introduction because it's, it's important that we tell one another who we are and what's important to us and being from matrilineal people I always you know acknowledge my mom's people and um, I'm Norwegian as well from my dad's side and um, you know it's 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 such a pleasure to be with all of you I'm, I'm on the traditional territory of the Kwilingan First Nation and Ta'an Kwachan Council in Whitehorse um, however, I really want to acknowledge the tr traditional territory of the Carcross Tagish um, people and the whole Southern Lakes area. And I want to also say um, uh, thank you to uh, Hasha Deheni Dixon and Deputy Hasha Deheni uh, Benoit for um, inviting me and for Gunta Business for inviting me to be part of this, this session. Um, Gunta Business has uh, been doing exceptional work and I have, uh, and I'm really honored to present alongside Tony Pennicott and uh, Carol Ann Hilton. I was uh, joking with um, Blair and Jesse the other morning saying, oh, no, no pressure at all. Um, but I am really honored to, to be part of this, this process and I've watched it unfold. 
for um, uh, a number of years now, and, and it's been really great to see where we're at. Um, and uh, the Carcross Comprehensive Community Plan is, is one, as I've said, that I've watched for some time. I think the process has been amazing. Uh, this plan has been in the making, as people, folks have said tonight, for, for over two years. And it's exciting to see the efforts of all the partners and participants distilled and really refined into the important in this really important document as the planning team has stated it's um, from the beginning this document is more than just a plan it's about building building and strengthening relationships and continuing to work together to realize the shared vision and the best possible future for this really important region of Yukon it's ambitious it has five pillars as we've heard um, described uh, in some detail tonight and 52 action plans that's ambitious and um, but tonight's session I know is um, focused on the pillars of education and wellness two of my favorite topics and um, education and wellness are, are so important and foundational to a accessible future and, and, and a healthy community so they are in fact so important that they are vital to the success of any nation planning um, undertaking. I always say that, you know, you can, we plan and plan and self-government has been that as well, but you know, you have to have education and wellness as a foundational piece in order to um, ensure that your people are able to participate fully in what was set out for them. And so, I am really happy to, to talk about that um, tonight. Um, and I was going to discuss what I'm, what I'm doing in my current role. I mean, it's such an honor to be a minister in, with the government of Yukon. In my current role, I'm minister responsible for tourism and culture and heritage and the women's directorate and the Yukon Workers' Compensation Health and Safety Board. And then uh, something happened on the weekend and I realized that I, that it was a full circle moment for me and in my life and um, with this particular area of, of Yukon for Carcross and Southern Lakes. Let me explain. So I um, have been bugging Phil and Harold since December to have a sweat and to do a ceremony and really connect back to, you know, and get, get grounded again. Um, we did a 45 day session recently and so I was really looking for grounding for myself and 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 my family and for the work that I'm em embarking on now and just to you know get into that place of of cleansing and um, so Harold and, and Phil uh, Gattensby um, said okay so you have to prepare and help us get the get the ceremony prepared and so my husband went out and did that and so it happens that um, the prep for the ceremony took place some of it on Montana mountain gathering some balsam boughs and while they were my husband Rick McLean um, was helping Harold gather those boughs he told them the creation story of and 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 my husband was so excited. He came home and he told me about this amazing creation story. And I have heard it before. And but he he said, you know, it was it was so powerful to have Harold there showing me where the grandmother sat and where the animals came. And and then on Monday morning, <laughs> when I was discussing with with Jesse and, and Blair about this um, presentation, Blair shared with me that, you know, when they first started this comprehensive community plan, he sat down with Harold and Harold told him that story and that the logo was actually a reflection of that story, the creation story. And I don't know, I hope all people in, that live in Southern Lakes know that story because it's an important one. And I truly, truly believe that things happen for a reason and that that ceremony that I've been bugging them to have forever happened 
on on the weekend before I'm planning to to speak to you. And so, and that's not the end of it. <laughs> I'll tell you more <laughs> because it's it's kind of a, a this is where I get into the full circle moment for me, and and how important it is. And I 100% believe in starting everything from from a ceremonial place. And um, so uh, I've been involved in ceremony in Parkross for a really long time. Um, Phil and Harold are have taken me under their wing and have shown me some things and, and helped me to learn about who I am and what is important in life. And um, so um, four years ago, I was involved in a project um, to look at, you know, what we should do with and how we should um, reconcile Chutla School. And so I, I worked alongside Katie Johnson and um, we started the project again in ceremony. And the messages that in that particular ceremony were very profound. They, one of the key messages that we received was that you have to be sharp in your focus and you must keep spirit first. And so, it, and the message was look at it like a spear, that it's sharp and it's, and, and look at it in that way. And when I read the plan, I want to say that I recognized the sharpness in the focus of this plan. Um, other message, of course, were foundational to um, reconciliation and that it, that reconciliation must happen from within the community first, within, and that then you can reconcile with others. And, um, and that cloud, you know, that when we were working on the Chutla project was, um, one of the, the things that came out really clearly was that folks talked a lot about that there's this dark cloud that sits over, even though we have we've have self-government, we've done all these amazing good things, but what was really folk, what, what was missing was in the healing from within and the, um, the uh, work that we have to do to reconcile with ourselves. And so it, it, it was really, so that's where the full circle comes for me. And when we were doing the consultation on that project, one of the ways we consulted was we decided to have a, a circle with folks and we had about 35 people come to that circle and share very intimate things with us about their experience in residential school and their um, need for healing. And they talked about the struggles that they have um, in, you know, trying to, to live in, in both worlds. And, and really all the messages that we received from that ceremony and that circle, and it was a talking circle and it went for a very long time. We, and, and the discussion was so rich, but it, it, it absolutely spoke exactly to what we heard and what we know from the ceremony. So I just, you know, I, I love this plan. I love, what I love about it the most is that it, it's really about unity and it represents so much opportunity for reconciliation for this. And, and reconciliation is, is, is a word that gets thrown around all the time, but what you have in front of you is um, really a carefully considered um, opportunity and many, many opportunities to, to reconcile um, within and with each other. And then you can move that outward. And I think, um, so when I, you know, thought about what I would say tonight, I, you know, I had lots of recommendations of, of things that I could talk about, but I, I felt like that was a really important story to, to tell you about in, because because the work has been started a long time ago. And, and, and if you can envision that, that spear and that sharpness and that focus that I, I think is, is really present here. And I, um, you know, I, I, 
I know that there were some questions about community safety. Uh, all, I also think that that is absolutely a foundational piece to um, when you're talking about education and wellness and um, any kind of personal development, community development, safety is so foundational as well. And I, I know that you've referenced it in the plan. I've read it throughout. And I think that um, the work that we did at Kwanlin Dunn First Nation and the community safety um, assessment and the plan that was done there when I when I worked with Kwanlin Dunn and what has continued on since since I left there has been uh, life changing for the community and and it's and it's brought a completely new focus and you can see it in every part of their community development and so um, that community safety assessment and plan that can come out of this is is really is really key and instrumental and i know that you know we've had discussions with hashad henny um dixon and benoit um in the past about that and i and i also want to talk about the connection um, to other plans in yukon so when you talk about like when i when i read through the plan i see you know, so many of the other st strategies that are Yukon, full Yukon strategies that this ties into. So the threads are there um, from putting people first to our clean future, a strategy for climate change, energy and, and green economy, um, the tourism development strategy. It's, it's, it's all very much aligned. And most recently, we've also developed the tourism relief and recovery strategy that comes out of the tourism development strategy that's uh, in response to COVID-19. Um, and of course, uh, you know, the, 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 the plan that's most closest to my heart is changing the story to upholding dignity and justice, Yukon's missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and 2S plus strategy. Um, this strategy has four pathways uh, that are strengthening connections and support, community safety and justice, um, economic independence and education, and um, uh, community uh, accountability. So there are 31 actions within this plan and it's an all of Yukon plan. And so I guess that's, one of the things that I wanted to talk about tonight as well is just the connection with all of those other strategies and and um, and doing so much of the work that you're doing internally is going to connect really well and and I you know I can't speak for all of my colleagues in government but I certainly know that that these are the the types of, of initiatives that we get behind because it really is um, showing that 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 thoughtfulness and the um, again connection really strong connection to um, what is important and so I don't know what my time is like here I think I'm probably no you're doing really good uh, you're doing really yeah good. okay take great, your time great I yeah I but so that's where I really kind of wanted to um, focus some of my attention was there in terms of the um, the connection to these other strategies and and knowing that um, uh, there there's a lot of opportunity for partnership here and I think that's key in in the success of of any plan um, I know that uh, you know when you when you talk about education it's it's really education from from my view of education is is cradle to grave I think that there it's the widest spectrum possible and and i and i do see all of those those actionable um uh initiatives within the plan that are going to really help transform this community and and you know i always um when i look at carcass tagish i you know I, I love that that cultural center is the learning center first like that's that's how it was described and so you know that's how important education is, and and um, and of course, you know, wellness is absolutely the underpinning of, of everything. And I've already, you know, talked about how important that is. And um, but you know, during and and you know, when I looked at the plan, I really 
you know, looked at that whole resilience piece and, and that's so key. And, and I think even just the fact that you have persevered through COVID-19 to get this plan to where it is today, to bring it to back to the people and check whether you got it right. And, you know, you can't consult too much. And I, and I think that that w was one of the, um, one of the, the things that stood out to me of uh, watching this process unfold is that, you know, you've taken the information, you've checked it back, you've taken the information, you've checked it back. Um, I know my nation, um, as Taltan Nation is really big on, on strategic planning and, um, but a strategic plan is not very good if it's just sitting on the shelf and not getting implemented. And so the emphasis on implementation is, is absolutely critical. And um, the success of successful nations are nations with strong plans that, and that, are, that also have strong implementation plans. And um, I know our, our nation completed their strategic, new strategic plan during COVID as well. So I um, really proud that, that they did that. And, and I'm proud that, you know, Southern Lakes and, um, and particularly Carcass Tagish have persevered through COVID-19 to bring, to bring it to where it is to, to today. And um, I'd really like to reiterate the importance of the inclusion of education and wellness and in the pillars in the Carcross um, community or the comprehensive community plan um, that outlines all of these in essential actions that um, are ensuring Carcross citizens have the ability to make the decisions on, on how their community grows and develops. Um, and just again, emphasizing as I started out with that, that opportunity for real unity. So I am gonna, going to close my comments now and maybe there are some questions, but I, I do wanna leave you with two questions. Um, and as you look at it over these next couple of weeks, please ask yourself, because this is where, this is your opportunity to really own this plan. Do you see yourself in this plan? That's really critically important because if you don't see yourself in this plan, you're not gonna have ownership over it. And the second question is, how can I help to breathe life into it? So those are my comments. Thank you again. I really so honored to be asked to, to do this and to provide some of my experience and my, my insights um, into this really important community initiative that you've undertaken. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jeannie. I'm, I'm going to ask, uh, is there any questions from the team? Um, anything from online? Christine? Hi, we have a, a question from the app. Um, what are your views on the 60 scoop? Oh, <laughs> 60 scoop. Well, you know, again, I, I really, our people have gone through the most horrendous things. They really have. You know, I liken it to, um, you know, the, um, residential school era and I you know that's why I've put my heart and soul into the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls strategy because it it was something that was an area that the um, premier asked me to lead on behalf of our government and so I sat down with Marie Sinclair I don't know, about midway through when we were working on that, that plan and that strategy and, and um, you know, just checked in to say, you know, do, do we have it right? Do, are we getting it right? Like, I really want to make sure, because I just have been blessed with this opportunity to be in receipt of this inquiry report um, with 231 calls for justice. And, and, you know, we talked about child welfare, we talked about that system. And one of the things he said to me was that 
um, yeah, you got it right. You said you're, you're putting the right emphasis on the right things. And, and um, because child welfare is really embedded in, in that, that strategy. But he said something that I never for, I, I'll never forget because it just really emphasized, it, it helped me to verify that we're on the right path. He said, the reason we talked about the inquiry first when we did the um, unveiled the the calls for action under TRC was because the work to around missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls was always more the most important recommendation it was always the, the first one because we um, knew that our women and our children were at the heart of our communities and that we had to really um, put that, that first, that when there's an attack on our women and our children, um, it's an attack on everything, that everything to the core of who we are. And so the 60s scoop is something we've definitely considered in the strategy on missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. So it's it's a broad strategy. I really encourage folks to have a look at it and and um, and you know again, how can you help us breathe breathe life into it? And because it's it's ours. And just like this strategy that you're working on here, it's yours, it's yours. And, and it's going to be as strong as, as what you put into it um, in the implementation, so thanks. Thank you very much for that. Uh, you know, it, when you look at the pillars, governance, um, mm -hmm. uh, healing and wellness, de uh, development and resiliency, when we mm -hmm. started this project, we were told that there's all these great opportunities, This wonderful governed nation but we can't leave the people behind mm -hmm. um, if the people aren't getting the benefit if they're not in the place in their life that they could actualize the opportunities and and benefit from the activities um, you know that that really needs to be looked at and so this is why we asked you to uh, speak on this we're, we take it very very seriously um, development and resilience and all that stuff is so interesting to me and for me to kind of do that work I really need to make sure that there are people who are working with the community that the, the community is grounded that people have the education to um, go for opportunities to organize themselves that they have those life um, those life aspects that are uh, taken for granted in, in some other uh, situations. So it, it is so important and um, really, I, I just wanted to reflect on that uh, listening to you speak. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so vitally important that, you know, that's why I wanted to make that comment that, you know, you, you don't, we wanna make sure that our people benefit from these agreements really at the end of the day, that they're, um, otherwise we're creating it for everyone else. And, uh, and there's lots of room for all Yukoners to thrive, to thrive. And, and, um, and this is yet another opportunity to do that and to take the time to go back and do that internal reconciliation as well. Because I think it's, it's, it's really key um, to understanding one another and, and finding those common, common threads. And yeah, so yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Blair. And I just wanted to also recognize, um, you were mentioning the missing and murdered Indigenous mm -hmm. women and the tourism strategy and all those strategies mm -hmm. are um, reflected in this comprehensive mm -hmm. community plan where, you know, it recognizes that these things need to happen and these are the partners who will be part of that implementation and here's some of those guiding principles and documents, whether it's chapter 22, chapter 14, chapter 11, whether it's um, tourism strategies, economic regional development strategies, um, all of these things have a part and place, but this plan is just kind of creating that foundation and building off the, the, the trunks, so to speak, so that these branches all can grow and, and, and develop this, this full picture, this full yeah. implementation of, of, land, of land claims, of self-governance, 
um, and mm -hmm. regional, you know, regional governance, you know, more, more than just self governance, but regional, how do you, how do we govern regionally um, without mm -hmm. exclusions, you know, inclusively. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I would have loved to go deeper into, you know, the tourism development strategy. And also we have, this is the one I didn't mention, and I should, my staff will probably be like, what, you didn't talk about this. But um, the creative and cultural industry strategy is another one. And it's the first one that's ever been done. Um, so we're just in final consultation on that. Like, again, going back to check, did we get it right? And, um, and that's going to be, that'll be really, really important um, in the economic um, uh, um, opportunities for communities. And, and, put you, and I see huge opportunity for women in that, in that strategy. So I really encourage you to have a look at that one as well, because it's, um, it's really important. And that, that, again, that whole holistic approach and, in the MMIWG strategy as well, there's there's that pillar that's about economic independence and 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 education because we want to change the story. The and economic independence and education are key to seeing this change. We do not want to have this, you know, the burden of this for you know any more generations than we have to. And so you know, when you look at it, that looking at it from a seven generation ahead approach and, and what that's going to look like, I, uh, yeah, so it, it takes, a, it took us a long time to get where we are. And we can make really fast strides in some areas and some areas are going to take longer, but we will get there. And that's, that's, um, and all of these processes tie together. So I, that's why I wanted to leave that question at the end is like, how do you, do you see yourself? And and um, and how how what what's your role here? Um, so yeah, it's it's exciting. I love community development initiatives, and and this one is a fantastic one. I think it sets a you know it's 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 impressive that to be the first um, self governing First Nation and the first to you know all those firsts that you that you listed off. Those those are um, I think. <laughs> those are big milestones and that that's something to be incredibly proud of and that's going to you know I think resonate with a lot of folks across the country and, and uh, you know and, and again this is not a easy process I'm sure there were lots of challenges along the way but you persevered and the resilience came through and and um, so you went through all of those you know um, values that you put at the foundation of this yourself. And so that's, that's fantastic. What, one last question, Jeannie. Mm -hmm. so you, were, you were a big part of the Jackson Lake healing camp. And mm -hmm. so one major topic that's come up is how feasible would that be to have something similar set up on the Carcross Tagish First Nation traditional territory? So residents or all Yukoners wouldn't have to travel down south, mm -hmm. but they could actually heal within their own traditional territory. Yeah, this, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was, that's one of the reasons why I came to Kwanlin Dun to work, because I knew they were interested in land-based healing and I wanted to be part of it. And so when I was given the opportunity to, to work on Jackson Lake land-based healing, it was again, a heart project. It was, you know, one of the things that I, I know for sure works. I, I watched it work. And then when I got the portfolio for tourism and culture, I was like, oh, okay. But all of those elements came into tourism as well. I was like, why do, want, why do people want to even come to the, why do they want to come to the Yukon? And it's because of that, that sacredness that we have in our land. Like you just have to step foot on it, and, you know, and it just, embraces you and so people you often often hear that that people will say that oh I came to the Yukon 20 years ago for a two-week vacation and never left or came back and always wanted to come back and and I think that it it's it's because of that and and the healing has been cultivated in this land and and so is it feasible to have 
healing. And this is something that we heard on MMIWG as well throughout every single, I went personally to meet with every single First Nation and every chief mayor and council in the Yukon to talk about this strategy. And every single one of them, First Nations, talked about the importance of land-based healing. So it's a very prominent um, uh, action within that that strategy and um, and and I do think that that there is a way to um, help move us forward in more land-based healing because I think the world needs to heal. I mean we actually have something here that um, will you know if we work together and and that's what the strategy talks about is you know let's develop a plan, an action plan for land-based healing in Yukon. And um, rather than competing with one another, um, that we support one another instead to, to see different variations potentially of land-based healing, or that some na nations are really interested in doing it for aftercare for, for their citizens. So, so I, I, there's a, broader discussion, I think that that needs to happen around land based healing throughout Yukon. But I also think it's an opportunity. As I said, the world needs to heal. And I think that the Yukon has exactly what the world needs. And if you do it in a way that, you know, you're ensuring that you are meeting the needs of your people for first, like our Yukoners and, and providing opportunities for others to come and heal in Yukon. I think that that would be something I'd be in. And that's why I always think, that's kind of why I think I got the tourism file because it helped me see that broader picture. And um, again, I think you're the sum of your experiences. And so when you get those opportunities to broaden your, your, your thoughts and, and how, things connect to one another um you know that's that's kind of a blessing to, to have that happen and and uh and i i think that we have something really unique and and i'm interested in having those types of conversations at that level 100 percent. thank you so much that was a great uh, great last answer um, thank you, Jeannie, for joining us. This was incredibly eye-opening. I really appreciate you spending the time and waiting so patiently. Uh, I thought it was great that you could be part of the, the review of the pillars itself. And uh, yeah, just on behalf of the CCP team and Good to Business, thank you. Goodness, Sheesh. You're welcome. Madhu. Penny Cho, thank you. Thank you. It's <laughs> great. Great. Well, um, Thank you. Uh, thank you once again, Jeannie. I'm going to pass it back to Christine and Ryan to finish us off with um, the next steps and uh, and a bit of a wrap up. Thank you so much. And, uh, and a door prize. Yay. Yay! Door prize! <laughs> so the first door prize winner of tonight is Martin Hayfeli. And I probably didn't say that properly. But um, Martin, um, please uh, send us an email to admin at Gunta Business. And we'll also follow up through your email that you registered with to let you know that you won a door prize. Yay. Awesome. All right. Now, in terms of wrap up, were there any further questions, comments or anything in the chat box? I just don't want to leave everybody behind. Okay. Ryan, I know this is really your thing. Who wants to wrap up? I'm happy to take it, brother, but I'm just thinking. Final word. <laughs> we'll always talk about implementation. Make sure we get the implementation. So I will say, please fill out a feedback form. You can fill out as many as you need to. And you get ended for the draw. Uh, and then it's open until February 8th to take a look at the CCP and give your feedback. Please do, folks. We got to own it, right? Just as we were told. Um, and I just want to make sure I covered it all and browse the app. Make sure you check out the app. And of course, development and resiliency is on Friday. Here, same time, same place. Be sure to join us. All right, over to you, Ryan. Anything else? 
<laughs> I thought you had it. You were just gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was thinking more about the uh, implementation specifics to the um, health the and wellness. Uh, the final step in the planning process, we are off to, we are in our final days. So it's been two years. Um, Jesse was just saying we're, it, it's kind of a sad moment for us. Our final steering committee is on February 10th. So we are, we are, our, it is coming to the end for us. So over the next two months, um, we are going to take any comments that you provide us. So it's very important you provide us as Minister Dundee's, or sorry, Minister McLean said. Um, do you see yourself in this plan and how can how can you help to breathe life into it? These are questions we very much want to answer. And uh, from there, we will take your comments. We will work, rework the plan. We will we'll, um, put the final, final touches on it. And we pass this off to CTFN for adoption in March. It's at the end of the day, their plan. So we're going to give it back to them. Christine, anything awesome. you'd like to add to that? That was super duper. That was precisely what I was thinking. And I need to come up with that because I was like, oh yeah, that's right. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're wrapping it up. Please get your voice in there, folks. Tell your friends, tell your family, talk about it. Maybe open up the app and take a look at the draft with family and friends, especially the areas of great interest to you. And give us some feedback and guidance. I want to thank everybody for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Great. Well, thank you guys. That concludes this evening. And uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. We will be thank back Friday. <laughs> awesome. Good night, everyone. Night, honey bunny. Thanks for joining. Are you shutting us down? Yeah, see ya. Good night. Night, hon. That makes me slow my stride Mama said I'll always be a hero in my eyes I can be the strongest in myself I don't despise Feel like I'm a prophet in disguise But most these people's songs are lies So what's the diff of mine? If everyone sees different lenses How could I be blind? I just need to understand these simple little lines The rhythm of my mind My recipe to feeling fine Yeah, I really feel I'm wound up Maybe I'm drunk, damn I have wine too much But every time I speak my mind They say my lines are sus I get fuck kidding Cause I will always be down My moment is now I feel that when they listen I frowns They'll look at me bad Some of these kids are calling me rad I feel like a lad Pass that piece of kick to the can Falling in a new brand But I'm still walking on my hands Trying to balance what I can And never taking zans Now I'm blinded like a horse Racing to my plans But I see that paper's course And it grinds my soul like sand in one left tag, I miss my life with that first blow, then the next bam. Yell my name like who knows, and my skin goes clam. Kinda wanna be the only person. And if it's worth it, maybe I'll be perfect. But close the curtains, it probably hurting, but no one's asking. Cause they're doing what they're told. It's tragic if they unfold. It's positive if they are old. And magic if they are told. Again, mention what I did with all my friends. And that is why I represent. I keep my hand up for anyone to lend. But when that time's up, don't you dare pretend. Never will I live a life that makes me slow my stride. Mama said I'll always be a hero in my eyes. I can be the strongest in myself, I don't despise. Feel like I'm a prophet in disguise. But most of these people's songs are lies, so what's the difference?
If you come bound, come to our little town. It's in the north, you go around and round. The land of the midnight sun is creeping in. Now come on down and sit right in. Well, if you sit right in, then you fit right in. And you can dance around as you go to the town in the car crawl. I've been in late. You can even skinny dip if you stay up late. <laughs> Whoa! You can eat dried meat or dried fish too. Do the bum guts bungaloo, ho ho. Some moose tongue. Or you can listen to an old album of In Canoe. If you're coming north, come to our Southern Lakes of Looper, you can get around, you can have a ball. Yeah. Don't stay too long, or you'll end up living here like many of the stories you'll hear all the time that I come to visit, and there I was. I'm still here, and it's 40 years later, and I got five kids, and three grandkids, and one great grandson, and some mothers that uh, are walking around saying, I think I know you. You look like me. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to say if you come up north then you want to play you can hike or bike on the trails in Montana mountain you can have some fun in the midnight sun you can fish around town on the walk-in bridge you can have a coffee or a swim in a winter Jump right in. <laughs> to walk but there's one thing that really gets in my crock it's the only one-way street in all of the north hell does that make any sense come on find an elder to tell you a story you might find an elder to tell you a story oh you might find an elder to tell you a story
Oh, oh, oh.